Henry Thoreau once said, we should go forth on the shortest of walks, perchance in the spirit of undying adventure, never to return, prepared to send back our embalmed hearts only as relics to our desolate kingdoms. If you are ready to say goodbye to mother and father and brother and sister and wife and child and friends and never see them again, if you've paid your debts and made your will and settled all your affairs and are a free man, then you're ready for a walk. The wind was light, betraying the gravity of the surrounding mortar and cement that was peppered with gunshot wounds. These marks that never bled, never healed, had been my home for several months. Scourged to the arid desert of Afghanistan, where there existed a vacuum of empathy for the dead, I, along with the rest of 3rd Battalion, 6th Marines, 2nd Marine Division, was sent to rid the world of a terror that had no foreseeable end. This terror, bathed in the blood of innocence, bathed in the blood of a country whose founding principles were life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, had represented an evil more clear and real and wrong than any I'd seen before. To my young mind, these were definitely the bad guys. So with shifty eyes and around in the chamber, we took the embassy at the heart of their capital, dismissing the late summer heat and driving on. We took it and we held it between our foaming teeth, filed into daggers by training and the eagerness of youth. We held it and months passed. And the climate of both earth and man changed. And in this one place, on this one night, I changed as well. I was walking between the retaining wall of the embassy and another inner wall that was set up to confuse aggressors. We were told that in the compound across the street, they might be harboring Al-Qaeda. In point of fact, they might actually be guarding it. For lust or love, we accepted this without question. The bad guys were right next door. Any day now. Any day now. The cold had approached on a thunderhead, and in its wake, the sky had scattered the land with falling snowflakes, like the ashes of a dying autumn. This ivory blanket, still in the making, gave an eerie silence to the moment, the minnows of sound being swept up in small icy nets and swallowed into the ether. The snow from early in the week had melted and encased the leafless branches of an overhanging tree, giving it an almost personified look, as though it were some looming demon out to rend me with talons that were sharper than my K-bar. Yet even then, what beautiful music, when frozen gym touched frozen gym. I went through the mantra of what I would do if I saw one of them, one of the bad guys. Kill, kill, kill. And why not? They'd have done the same for me. But how would I kill them in this scenario? Or this scenario? Or the next? It, it didn't really matter. So long as I killed them. But this wasn't the case. At this one place, at this one time, completely alone and in deafening silence, save for the wind in the trees. In this one place, at this one time, the man across the street, the haji I would have casually shot in the face just moments before, began playing a homemade flute. And the moment's recognition met with my conscious transformation. It was a beauty I couldn't have imagined to pray for. The flute danced along the melody of the wind in the trees, their branches playing their crystalline cymbals like a slowly moving belly dancer. All the while, these individual snowflakes landing on the muzzle of my gun, precious and fleeting as a passing thought. I felt in a way I never would have otherwise, caught like sound in the snow freezing and frozen. And then I left. Years later, I had been honorably discharged from the Marine Corps, and having saved up enough money, I began again as a civilian. I'd, uh, I'd paid all of my debts. As a matter of fact, I'd had a surplus. Uh, my will was made before I ever left America. 
and all of my affairs had been tended to, at least those that I could. I was a free man. And, and so, and so without knowing it, I took one of Thoreau's walks and I wept. Thank you. <laughs>